what are your thoughts on minimum training? So the, the idea that we can do one set per body part to muscular failure, maybe how you'd go about frequency, what measures you might use, how you'd understand I've done too much or I've done too little. Mm. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a definite fan of the minimist approach to exercise, the minimum effective dose, um, rather than more is better, even more is better than that. And when that's still not enough and you still don't get the results you like or want, then even more is what you should have been doing. So go and do more moving forward. Um, no, it's not about more. It's about effective and um, rapidly effective I would, you know, I would hope. So with that in mind, um, I would suggest that in my understanding, single set to failure is demonstrably as effective, if not more so in some circumstances, in terms of muscular development, strength development, and a number of other aspects of muscular neuromuscular fitness as well so um i think <clears throat> that excuse me i think that the jury is out in terms of the exact makeup or range of makeups but i think we're, we're we're pretty close to zoned in on it and i think either one or two sets working sets that is per muscle group of around about eight reps were the weight that couldn't be lifted nine times. That seems to be pretty optimal in terms of hypertrophy strength, a balance between those two. Um, or for the same outcome, you might do single set to failure with either fixed or variable resistance. And that may well be deemed, may well, the research such that it is suggests potentially that there's not a huge difference. Like, the, you know, it's the 95% of stuff, so it's either or, in my mind. I think both are valid training methodologies. I don't think volume is the answer in terms of muscular strength development or certainly not hypertrophy or power. So, yeah, um, I'd definitely be a fan. Yeah, um, you might be able to re relate to this with different clients you've spoken to. I recently worked with a client that was doing 185 sets per week. So 185 sets. Mm. Um, how would you go about directing them from there? I mean, would you phase down their training? So it would be like maybe 120, then 60, then? Uh, it really depends. Two, would you yeah, it depends case by case what level of athlete we're talking about, whether they're professional, sub-professional, or purely amateur, or where their psychology is at, because many athletes are um, deeply, deeply invested in the mental illness of volume training being a good thing, because it's not. Um, yeah. So if you have to wean somebody off that kind of exercise because they don't understand that they need to stop it right now, then, you know, we can. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, on the point of, like, training eight reps but not to nine, mm. I think it might be important for people to understand how to define what you're saying is is um, muscular failure. So, of course, we've got the concentric, the lifting phase, mm. the isometric phase, if you mean you're adding that, mm. and the eccentric phase. What, what do you say was most appropriate to people, um, or is that on a case-by-case -case basis? Well, I, again, it's case-by-case, -case, depends on needs. Um, what is very interesting is that the muscular power that is being produced is actually at its highest during the eccentric phase of a muscular contraction relaxation cycle. That's quite a surprise for many people that they don't understand that that's so. So much that it's an, often it's a useful training methodology to use for someone who cannot do a certain thing, like you can't do a chin-up. Then what you will do is you will get a box 
or similar underneath the chin bar that will hold you so that you can actually get up to the top of the chin up and then you take your weight and lower yourself down i.e. the negative phase, the eccentric phase of that lift and you repetitively do that so then you stand up and you do the negative again, stand up, do the negative again and you do X number of reps of that and then suddenly one day you get it into your mind a few weeks later now it would be interesting to see whether I can actually do a chin up now that I've been doing this eccentric training and people find they can mm. yeah. it's yeah. surprising the, the strength transfer isn't it so, it's interesting yeah mm. um, of course like the, I guess the harder we train the closer to eccentric failure we get it takes more of a, a, a toll on our body this recovery yeah. system yeah would you say that it's, of course, on, on a case-by-case -case basis, but would you say for someone that's very advanced, they have to be concentric, then isometric, then eccentric failure, all within a given set? Or is it just, you know, concentric failure? I think so long as you can put your hand on your heart and say, I know I went to failure there, I know I met the end of that set, I think that's sufficient. And what you're talking about there, Jonathan, I think is one of those 1% to 5% things, maybe at the very, very most elite yeah. end of things. And the answer to your question mm. in that case would still be maybe. Depends. Mm. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like the same. I think you can tap into your recovery system so much, um, but then your volume will go, will go right, right, right down. So I've tried this myself. I've done... Um, all kind of three levels of training failure. By the time I get around to the second set of, for example, eight reps, it's not eight reps, it'd be four. Um, mm. So it does take a big, big, big um, dig in terms of recovery. Um, would you, on that note about like sets, would you say there's like a, maybe like a guideline or a range of sets that someone should perform per body part or per week or per right. session? In all but elite hypertrophy athletes, bodybuilders, etc. For the most part, for most people who are just looking for that usual strength improvements, a bit of hypertrophy, some crossover fitness, um, what I generally say to a person is that a whole body split is sufficient. You don't need to split it down. So one single split, the same split every time. It's a series of exercises that goes pretty much head to toe, which last time I counted up through them, I would have somewhere between 11 and 13 exercises in my master set, my split. And it's one set to failure or two sets at that fixed resistance level that I was talking about with the eight reps. And you'd go through that twice in a session for the fixed resistance or just the once to failure and the one otherwise, of course. And, and that's three or four times a week maximum in and out of the gym in an hour or less, no sitting on the bench, no sipping water, no looking at who looks good in their lycra, you ain't got time for that, you're in and you're out, sort of thing. And the way I do it when I'm doing two sets is I superset the entire split, all 11 to 13. And then I'd go back to the top and do the second set. So actually you get a significant break between the two sets. So if, you, yeah, that's, I guess a different body parts, that's how you're going to get that recovery ability. So yeah. you can still do the set of the ranks. Yeah. Mm. It's 20, 25 so, minutes so that, between sets. Yeah. 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 I'm guessing that, what does that look like? 22 to 26 sets per, uh, per, per day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Three or four yeah. times okay. a week, depending, you know, because seven days in a week, and if you do it every other day. Mm. 
Or you can have yeah, three fixed advice. days that you do your training, not consecutive days. Mm-hmm. That's not allowed. And then just do yeah. three every week. That's fine too. You won't be penalised for missing that extra day of training on the second week. Mm. Yeah, I'd rather see someone train a bit less and a bit more, especially with the the standpoint that most people, you know, when I get a check-in sheet with someone that said, oh, well, you know, brought me a plan. What are you doing? Okay, I'm doing 100 five sets per yeah. a week. Insane. And it's always a case of refining it. Um, yeah. And it'll be, you know, lots and lots and lots of different exercises. But the thing is, we only need a few exercises. Yeah. They've listed, you know, 11 to 13 exercises, which I think is about right, um, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. So, yeah. Brilliant. Um, that's cool. all my questions for today. Oh, easy. Quite easy sweet. peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah. A pleasure as always, Jonathan. It's always good to cross-pollinate and to talk to sensible people and get views on things. 